When building a web application, or just any website, security is an important consideration you need to make. If you're working in Express, Helmet might be for you. Helmet is an Express middleware that works by packaging together 14 other Express middlewares. Helmet provides HTTP headers that help increase security. It will add and remove headers to comply with modern web security standards. This is incredibly important because it makes it much more difficult to exploit known vulnerabilities. Express, for example, has vulnerabilities that make it much more susceptible to cross-site scripting attacks and clickjacking attacks. Helmet is not the end-all be-all or one-stop shop for web cybersecurity. However, it's an important layer to put in place. If we look at the cybersecurity Swiss cheese model of protection, we can see that Helmet will be just one layer in our protection model. Standard Express headers provide and expose sensitive information about the framework you're using. One such of these headers is X powered by, which is a non-standard header that provides specific information about the backup technology you're using. If we look, we can see that the X powered by header here in Firefox shows X powered by Express. This would allow a malicious attacker to target known vulnerabilities in Express and try to exploit your web page. Let's go ahead and add Helmet to an Express project and see exactly what it does. Our project consists of index.js, which is our routes, helmet.ejs, which is our HTML, and app.js, which is our main Express project. Here is the site that it all creates right now, and this is without Helmet. From here, let's go ahead and install Helmet. So in our console, we're gonna do npm install Helmet. Super simple, like you're installing any other npm package, we'll let that install. Once we have that, we're gonna to go to our main app.js, which is our project, and we're gonna do var helmet equals requires helmet. Just like, again, any other package. Down below, we're gonna to wanna to do app.use, and then in parentheses, helmet. Now let's take a look at what Helmet added to our project. So first we're going to want to restart our web server. So that's just npm run start. Let that start. And now let's go over, type localhost 3000, again, just like normal. Let's inspect element. Reload the page. Select and let's look at our HTTP headers. There are a lot of headers here, so I'm gonna do just a real brief overview of what each one does. So the HTTP content security policy response header allows the website administrators to control resources the user agent is allowed to load for the given page. The HTTP cross origin embedder policy or COEP, C-O-E-P, response header configures embedding cross origin resources into the document. The cross-origin opener policy, COOP, C-O-O-P, response header allows you to ensure a top-level document does not share a browsing context group with cross-origin documents. The HTTP cross-origin resources policy response header conveys a desire that the browser blocks no cores, cross-origin, or cross-site requests to the given resource. The origin agent cluster is a HTTP response header that instructs the browser to prevent synchronous scripting access between same site cross origin pages. The refer policy header controls how much refer information sent with the refer header should be included with requests. The strict transport security response header, also abbreviated to HSTS sometimes, informs browser that the site should only be accessed using HTTPS any future attempts to access it using HTTP should automatically be converted to HTTPS. Now we're starting on our X headers, which are non-standard headers. The X content type options response is a marker used by the server to indicate that the MIME types advertised in the content type header should be followed and not changed. This header allows you to avoid MIME, MIME type sniffing by saying that the MIME types are deliberately configured. The XDNS prefetch control HTTP response header controls DNS prefetching, a feature by which browsers proactively perform domain name resolution 
both links that the user may choose to follow as well as URLs for items referenced by the document, including images, CSS, JavaScript, and so forth. The X download options header has only one option, no open. This is for Internet Explorer from versions 8 on to instruct the browser not to open any download directly in the browser, but instead provide only the save option to the user. The X frame options header can be used to indicate whether or not a browser should be allowed to render a page in a frame, iframe, embed, or object. Sites can use this to avoid clickjacking attacks by ensuring that their content is not embedded into other sites. The X permitted cross domain policies header is used to allow PDF and flash documents for cross domain requests. And lastly, the X XSS protection or cross site scripting protection header is a feature of Internet Explorer, Chrome, and Safari that stops pages from loading when they detect a cross site scripting attack. As you might have noticed, our website doesn't look like it did before. We've got a few of these errors and our picture isn't showing up. So this is due to some of the configuration that we need to do with Helmet and the security policies it put into place. So we can see our errors are content security policy related. So let's go over and look at our documentation. Scroll down to our content security policy options, which is one of the headers. And we can see some of the options we have to configure this. You can see that we can send in our own data to the options. We've got a script error and an image error. And we can see some examples of how to do that. So we can take a look, get an idea. And now let's go back over to our code and implement this. So first, we're going to want to put brackets in here. Then we're going to do content security policy, and then we're going to do brackets again. So this is getting us into our content security policy area. We're going to do directives and send in our own options and configurations. So first, script-src, because this is modifying our script policy. We're going to put in self, because we want to make sure the self configurations are there. And we're going to add in cdn.jsdeliver. And this is because this is where our bootstrap scripts are coming from. Next, we're going to do the same with image. So image src to get our image src config. And we're going to send in the default configs and helmetjs.github.io because that's where the image is coming from. Fix our commas. And let's see if it worked. So first we got our restarter server because we made a modification. And now let's see if it worked. Refreshing the page. And we still have a few errors. So this is actually a cores error, at least with the image. So this is because we need to actually go into our HTML and set our cross origin. So we go to our image. We're going to do cross origin and we have to set it to anonymous. This is a little tricky thing that's not quite in the documentation. So this is important to pick up on. See, now we've got our image. We've got one more issue and that's because of a misspelling with JS Deliver, it looks like. So let's go back. Let's fix our spelling. restart our server, and no more errors. So let's go ahead and add some more configuration. So first off, let's say we want to take styles from anywhere. The documentation recommends style-src and setting that to null, which will erase all the defaults. Some other options we can add in are modifying the refer policy. So here we're going to type in refer policy. And like content security policy before, we can just change the option. Refer policy only has policy as an option. And by default, it's no refer. We're going to keep it as no refer just for this. But you could change that to whatever you need. Next, another common one that can be configured is the uh, strict transport security, or HSTS 
um, and that'll again force you to use HTTPS. So here we can set max age to a different value. De by default it's 180 days, here we're setting it about 80 days and then we can also say that this only applies to the main domain and isn't included in the subdomains. And lastly we can add in a frame guard configuration. So what this does again is it specifies whether or not a browser should be allowed to render a page in the frame, iframe, embed, or object HTML elements and we can change that to deny here. So let's go ahead and try to run this. Okay, if we go over back to Google, let's load our page. So again, localhost 3000. And you can see that our CSS is a little messed up. Our helmet's not in the middle, our text isn't centered. So let's go ahead, inspect element, and see what's going on. If we come down to our console, we can see we've got content security policy issues. And we did modify our content security policy with that style SRC. And we can see that it has an issue with inline resources. So depending on your style policy, it may not be best practice to do inline CSS, but I have it in a few places in my HTML. So that's what's causing the issue. Let's go try to fix it. So let's go back to our code. We're going to want to go back to our config area. All right, and now it's style.src or style-src that's causing the issue. And the reason is null wipes away all the defaults. And there's one key thing we want in here, and that's going to be unsafe inline. And this is saying that we can use inline, and it's not going to check for the safety. Um, but when we want to accomplish the same thing that null will do, which is any website can give us style, we just have to add an asterisk in there as well. So now if we run it, everything works. So that's a pretty common trap to fall in with the configuration is wiping away more than you wanted. So it's better to do overrides than it is to completely wipe out different policies. We can see here in our header that we've got style or dash src self unsafe inline and asterisk. So we can pull styles from anywhere and have styles inline. I hope this video has helped you understand what Helmet is, what Helmet does, how to install Helmet, and how to configure Helmet, and how to avoid common issues that arise when you're using Helmet. Helmet is one of the best and most simple ways to provide security for your website. Security is often overlooked, especially when you're looking for APIs or more cool stuff, when you're developing code, or when you've got deadlines. But Helmet, in its default configuration, is just two lines of code. Don't neglect security for your website. Try a Helmet.